Have been called that by his Wait until after they vote, Johnny. Wait until after they vote, Johnny. Wait until Just everybody's hand. Oh, okay. It's going to be a drawing. Sign up for a door prize. You don't know what he does about me. We're going to get some taxi. We're going to blame it on you. There you go. There you go. It won't be the first time. <laughs> I got three minutes still, but I think everybody's here. All the mayor, there he is. He's the mayor. Let's right. go ahead and call our meeting to order. And uh, Bill, I appreciate you making the effort to be here and give us a quorum. We have five. And that's the quorum. Uh, mayor, what do you want to take up first? The urban services? Chairman, that's up to you. Uh, let's let's take up urban services first. I believe they're meeting uh, appeal to go with the urban the rate that was said. Is that right? Yes, sir. Uh, and I think Mr. Director could address it further. He was the chairman of the urban services if he wants to add anything. Yeah, we just we discussed the urban. We had an urban services meeting. We discussed it. I think uh, a motion was made and approved, accepted as it is. But after after that, I've looked and I've talked to the sheriff. We'll talk about. Uh, Something we might want to look at is these dispatchers. We pay them for two that might want to look at coming out of that ambulance service one of the 118 because a lot of their calls that coming in over to dispatch is ambulance related calls. I just thought I'd like to see that taken out of the urban and put into the 118. Uh, Who is the county council? Richard and David. Richard Johnson, David and all. Okay. okay. Uh, you, wouldn't you have to meet with them in order to do that? <clears throat> Are they both here? I mean, that's, I, mean, I don't know if it's something we can do or just. If we can't do it this year, it's something we're going to look into for the next year's budget. If, that, that was if I might just say something, I don't think which, uh, above us talking about changing the tax rate is just a budget issue with transferring funds from mm -hmm. one account to another. You're not talking about tax rate, are you? Both? No. How many dispatchers did you say? I one think it was a two. 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 Okay. Tax rate would be 087.53, and you're recommending then to the, to the uh, budget and finance to to accept that rate that was proposed to you. We did, but uh, okay, we agree to that. Uh, I need that in the form of a motion. But you want to you want to reconsider? Is that correct? We was wanting, I was wanting to reconsider, in, you know, the moving of two dispatchers. Out of the urban service fund into the ambulance service fund. I mean, if we can pay them out of that ambulance, the 118 fund. Well, it's the majority. Kind of the on that. First, that be money that be coming out of his budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You left to go back that's to what the, the I, I, We agreed to it this year, and that's something we for the next year's budget we're going to have to check into. Okay. Yeah. I still need a motion. Well, I'll make a motion that the urban services fund. Except what, what we've got here. 87.53. 80, yeah. Richard made a second. The right? is not on the budget and finance. Mr. Rachel, you second it. Second it. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion on it? Any other discussion on it? <laughs> not all in favor say aye. 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 All eyes, Miss Rachel, say so, uh, I guess we'll move on to uh, 
for the school board's budget. Mr. Satterfield, you up? I'm up. You up? First of all, I want to tell you, thank you so much for everybody that's in the room. You've got to be concerned about the topic at hand or you wouldn't be here on Friday night and then get a, a, a rain delay or whatever. <laughs> and then, in sports, we'd call it, and uh, come back. Uh, Mr. Drew, if y'all would help me a little bit, sure. pass out the, the budget. And I sent this to the board, passed this budget uh, last night in their monthly uh, session. Uh, we mailed that to the mayor's uh, office as quickly as we as true. I'm the, I'm the office this morning. Thank you, sir. So give him some time to look at it. What about the chairman? You get one this time? I got one. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If Mr. Kerr is passing those out, I think the last time that we were here together was that we were talking about estimated FY19 uh, expenditures as well as revenues. And um, again, their estimations. And one of the things during the uh, comments or questioning was that uh, when will you know what will be actualized or closed out? And I said, well, our auditor is not coming into the 17th of July, and somewhere around that point in time, we will know. So the budget that you have before you is that middle column that you see, where it says estimated 2018-19 are our closed out audited numbers. Uh, on the revenue side, I mean, excuse me, on the expenditure side, and then we work with the mayor on the revenues and plug in all but one revenue item that he sent me a spreadsheet for. And other, I don't remember what it was, but it was very uh, incidental, and actually it was a number that was above what we had collected the year before. Angie, do you not remember what that was? But we plugged in all the revenue from that. Uh, before we get into that, I'd like to uh, pass you out, I think, is continues to be our, our key talking points. And uh, you know, the mayor and Mr. Ford met with uh, Met with Wesley Robertson from CTAS, who used to work for the State Department of Education Finance. And as you know, that he has counseled with both the county office and the board office as well. And he also came to us in December and talked to us about fiscal capacity, how it's calculated, projected numbers, those types of things. And I think that one of the things that he talked to the mayor, and I was not in that meeting, he talked to the mayor and Mr. Ford about was that those numbers that he gave us in December were not as severe or as significant as he had once told us. As a matter of fact, we were working off of FY20 that we would have a $429,000 loss in BEP from the uh, start of this physical capacity issue, that being the year 1718. Uh, but he told us $429,000, and he said next year for FY21, you know, you could probably add $150,000 to that. He told Mr. Ford and uh, the mayor that that number was a little bit was less than that. Uh, so I asked Wesley to, if he would give me equal time and would he, number one, confer that statement, not that I don't believe Mr. Fuller, 
but I'd like I'd like to hear it from him. And I asked Wesley explicitly, is that what you told the mayor and the chairman? And he said, I did. And I said, Wesley, those are your numbers. Those numbers came from you. He said, I know. But they're different now. And I said, so what are those numbers? And he said, I can't tell you. Uh, I mean, he like, I, I can't, I mean, not that I, I won't tell you, that I can't tell you, I don't really know what those numbers are. So the numbers that you have on that sheet right there are backed up from evidence on the three BP allocations over the last three years. And if you will go back, if you'll turn over to the if you'll turn over to the, the second from the last page, the second from the last page, we'll do these in sequential order. You will see that is the July final BP allocation for year 1718. This is the last year before fiscal capacity hit. And you can see at the top, there's four components to the BP. Instructional salaries, instructional benefits, classroom funding, and non-classroom funding. If you'll just go where it's dark, where it says instructional salaries, state share of instructional funding, it says 85%. The state is paying 85% of the BEP allocation in 17-18. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. How much is the local paying? Right above that 85% number, what is the local paying in instructional salaries? 15%. Okay, do you see that? Ms. Jackson, on the last page. Okay. Uh, well, she doubled those. Okay, but look for the year, the very, the very back page, yes, 1718, and you can see it was funded at 85% for the state. And 15% for the local. Well, I know 85 and 15 equals 100. That's right. Yeah. I, mean, I, just want, I want you to put I your eyes. Anyway. <laughs> I want you to put your eyes on how it's allocated. Yeah. Now, if you'll move down to the non classroom funding, it's funded at a little bit different level 22.43, and the state funded at 77.57. Now, if you'll go to the very next year, the July final 2018 19. If you'll locate that, you'll see now that the state share excuse me, the state that's 18, I mean excuse me, yes, 18, 19, you'll see now that the state share July 5, 17, 18, yeah, has gone to 81.85%. So it's been reduced from the prior year, 85% to 81.85. And you can see those in each one of those four instructional components. Now, if you'll turn to the most recent, which is the 1920 June estimate. What day is this? The 19th, 19th of June, July? Yeah. It's the 19th of July, and we have yet to get our July final. We thought it would be here, be able to plug it in the budget tonight. But it's not here. But the latest that we've got is the June estimate. If you'll just stay with instructional salaries, now you see the state share has been reduced to 80.74%, and the local has been increased to 19.2%. Now, if you'll go back to the top and look at this spreadsheet, all of those numbers are plotted on this spreadsheet. And you can see from FY20. To where we are now, FY, I mean from FY18 to FY19, you can see that downward trend where we're losing the percent for which the state is paying to the BP. And as that drops, the local responsibility comes up. And you can see that column in red where it says the difference. So we've lost 4.26% in instructional salaries. 4.26 in instructional benefits, 3.82 in, in classroom component, and 6.26 in the non-classroom component. If you take that percent, 
and put it against the 2017-18 allocation, then you can calculate what we would have had if physical capacity had not hit us. And that amount is the total at the bottom of 367.078.60. Now, when I had Wesley in the room, Angie, and I said, you're saying that loss is not $429,000. He said, that's right. It's less than that. I said, Wesley, what is it? He said, I can't tell you. I said, well, here, here's the last three years of state allocations, and here's my calculation. What do you say? And he said, I see nothing wrong with your math. So that is what we're saying. When we know we lost six, uh, six hundred, uh, three hundred sixty, three hundred and six thousand dollars last year, we know that we stand to lose three sixty seven seventy eight this year. But it's much more severe than that. Now, one of the things that we recognize that we agree with the mayor. And we said that the first night we were here. When we started working, refining our budget, looking at the revenue side, we saw revenues coming in better than we anticipated. That was a good thing. We went back and worked it. I found about $81,000, $85,000. And of course, I've been to the CTAS, budget and finance, uh, training just like probably everybody in this room. And they say that you overestimate your expenditures and underestimate your revenues. So we want to be careful with that. I think there's a county to the east of us that failed to do that and got hit with a significant property tax hike because they failed to go by basic budgeting, accounting, best practices. But here's the issue is that we know that we lost, I won't even say about next year, I'll just talk about this year. This year, we know that we're losing 360, um, 367.78. We know that during the same three year period of time, from 17, 18 to where we are now, that our mandatory teacher raises have gone up over $35,000, we know. We also know that we have lost in the BEP, and you can look on page two, where it says state of Tennessee, the revenue number is 46511, it says basic education program, and you can see where the actual come in in 2017 at $7,768,000. And you can see how much we're receiving right now, seven million six ninety nine, from seventeen eighteen to this year nineteen twenty. That BEP is sixty nine thousand dollars less than it was in the midst of the state has been contributing more money to the BEP, yet we're sixty nine thousand dollars less. At the same time that our teacher salaries have gone up over $365,000 and our fiscal capacity from the state is lessened. Additionally, we know that our health insurance of all our employees during that time has gone up over $300,000. So if you put the loss of $367.08 the $35,000 teacher salaries, the $69,000 that we've lost in BEP over two years, and add the insurance to it, which are inflationary costs, we know that we have $872,366 less money to help our students and to help our employees. Now, Our budget, the budget you have before you, the budget you have before you, no longer asks for $871,000.37 tax increase. We've worked with the board extensively 
and the board asks that you be re that everyone be reasonable and just make up the difference that we're losing this year. Not the three, not the three hundred and six thousand dollars from last year. We took that out of fund balance. We're, we're good with that. But going forward, all they're asking for is what they're losing this year, and that's three hundred and sixty-seven, three hundred sixty-seven thousand and seventy-eight dollars. Now, if if a penny is worth twenty-two nine ninety, is that right? Twenty-four nine ninety-nine. We are calculating that a penny is worth twenty-two nine ninety. What percentage are you using? Ninety-two. Ninety-two percent. We collected between one hundred and one and one hundred two percent this year. I'm just, that's up to y'all, and I'm plugging the numbers in that the mayor gives me. But if we calculated that a penny is worth twenty-two nine ninety, then that would be a little bit shy of sixteen cents if you're looking at a property tax. So when you look at the, if you look at revenue 40110, current property tax, so what you're seeing is the number that the mayor provided to us, which was 1,419,854, plus the, the 367,078, and that would come to an equivalent of what they're asking for with the board, what myself and the board is asking for is 1,786,932. Now, the key is, is go to the back page. We've done this, we've done this exercise before. I know we're getting better at it. Okay? If you look, remember that middle column is no longer an estimate. Do you remember Mr. Walsh when he was here the last time we talked? He said, Are these real numbers or they're estimates? I said, They're estimates, that's all we can have. And he said, I, I move that we don't address this until we have actual numbers. And I said, that's good, but it's going to be around the 18th of July. We're here now. So those, these numbers that you have in that middle column are not estimates anymore. They're actual numbers. So you see that bottom number is our fund balance, $3,922,875. That's our fund balance. Our fund balance this time last year was four million five hundred six seven eighty five. So you can see that the fund balance is changing, but it's trending downward. And even with this amount, this three hundred eighty-seven thousand dollars, then next year's fund balance would be estimated to be at two million seven thirty-eight zero seventy-five. That's with it. Now we we've done this before. Is give you another scenario. Here's the other and last scenario. This is yes, this is what you would do with no increase to students. This would be This would be if hey I need maybe I need I'm not give out all my no I got one I got one I'm good I'm good I got one I'm trying to save you best I can all right so now you'll see it's in yellow the revenue that we plugged in the number provided to us by the mayor was one million four nineteen eight fifty four here's something alarming to me is that's forty nine thousand dollars less than we had last year supposedly at the same tax rate i don't know i don't know how that's cooked i get my numbers from the mayor dwayne bird so that's not my number but that's but that's forty nine thousand dollars less than what we had last year and so if you get $49,000 less than we got last year, and you turn over to the back page, which is 16. Now you'll see that fund balance is moved from your budget, your anticipated fund balance of two of two seven thirty eight oh seventy five now goes to two million three seventy nine ninety seven. So
So here's what I'm saying is the fund balance continues to drop. I asked Wesley explicitly, what is an adequate fund balance? And he said that it is four months of operating expenses. We run approximately a $12 million budget. Take $12 million, divide it by four, multiply times four months, you're hitting right at about 3.6, 3.7 million. Neither one of those numbers gets us to a healthy fund balance. And in the state, has been very clear is on the physical capacity side, we give you three years to make the adjustment. Last year, we did nothing but take it out of fund balance. This year, you're saying take it out of fund balance again. And then all of a sudden, the next year, you're going to be hit with a full amount and you've drawn against fund balance about, about three quarters of a million dollars and what I'm saying is, I just don't know if that's responsible. And here's the thing, if you're going to ask the school board to run their operating costs off of their fund balance, then all the capital outlay things that we need to do, like a roof at the middle school, $830,000, we're not going to be able to do. So the question is, if you're going to ask the school board to run their fund balance down below what's recommended, are you willing and prepared to take on all the capital outlay expenses that's going to come along? And if you are, then I would suggest that we start with the middle school roof and get to work on that. Uh, basically, that, that's all I have. But those are the, here's the thing. Those are not estimates. They're real numbers now. They're real numbers. And they need real solutions, is what I'm saying. So I'll try to answer any questions that you may have. Our four, of our four of our five board members are here. And also, my chief executive officer is here as well to try to help you in any way that we can. This is the Murray, you want to speak to any of that? This is the so well, first thing I'm going to say, I object to the use of the word cooked. It offends me. Cooked? You said I cooked the numbers. No, I didn't say you cooked yeah, the numbers. Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah. Okay, I apologize. You don't know how it's cooked. Yeah, I don't know how it's cooked. I don't know how it's baked. Yeah. Yeah, and I also object to the statement that that's, uh, what was it, 40-something thousand dollars? Your budget for last year was not what you're, you're, you got your estimates on there now, which is good. But let me get, uh, let me get, I calculated it here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Using the actual last year's budget, the number I provided, which is 92% of what the tax rate would be current, is only $14,877 less than what they had budgeted last year. The real number, 100% of the tax revenue, we calculate $1,543,320. That would be the 100 amount. Now let's go back over to the jumping around on the BEP side. The exercise of looking at percentage, let's look, look at real numbers. The June 1920 estimate, look where it says required local match for instructional salary. Well, that'd be the front. Where we are? It should be the second page. You on this one here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that one there. Sorry. The amount? The county share of that is $800,000. All right, I'm going to switch back to the 17, 18, Where are you getting that number from? Is anyone from the BP estimate? Oh, percentages. The one that's got percentage on it. Uh-huh. And if you look at the 17, 18 July file, that amount was $591,000. So the county share went up $209,000 because that's what the fiscal capacity formula does. It moves it from the state share to the county share. That's how it's designed to operate. 
and it kind of goes like that along the board. The uh, instructional benefits funding, the county share went up eighty-two thousand. Classroom funding, the county share went up fifty-five thousand dollars. Non-classroom funding, the county share went up two hundred twenty-one thousand dollars. So a total of five hundred sixty-seven thousand dollars from two budget years ago. Now looking at, if you look at those numbers right here at the bottom, or not to the bottom, kind of middle page, there's a state BEP funding allocation. For a 17-18 year, it was $7,738,000. If you look, go back and look at the second page, it says 19-20 June estimate, $7,719,000. That's a difference of $19,000 from two budget years ago. Now, if you look at the June, excuse me, June, uh, I think it's 18, 19, 19, 20. No, I'm going July, I'm sorry, July okay. final for 18, 19. It did drop from 7738000 in 17, 18 to 7540000 in July for the 18, 19 years. That's $188,000. But the county's required local match went up $382,000. And the total overall funding went up $184,000. And that's combined between the state and local government. Now this last fiscal year, if you look over here, I think their total revenue went up $609,000 plus. And I include revenue with state, local, federal, Total allocation went up 600, or total revenue went up $609,000. And just looking at what we got here on my page, and I apologize, I don't think I have the complete numbers, but I guess I do. Uh, the county local taxes, and that's property tax, sales tax, all that, any kind of tax, according to the numbers I have, it came down $202,715 above. And if you could hold all total local revenue, that's any permits, rental fees, anything like that, uh, $276,586 more in local revenue. So we, we, the local government, just by naturally growth, is putting in more revenue. And I think last year they budgeted, as far as the local taxes and everything they got on here, uh, let's see here, get the exact amount, I don't think I have. I've got it's two million three hundred thirty-two thousand nine hundred thirty-one dollars, and the eighteen nineteen actual came in two million six hundred fifteen thousand eight hundred nine dollars. So there, there's been just growth there naturally. Next year, I expect we'll have more growth. As I said, or if you look at hundred percent, I know you're not supposed to budget on that, but just for informational purposes, to help explain why this number is at the ninety-two percent mark. We are experiencing natural growth, just it's naturally occurring. And next year we're going to have the Garrett Brothers that's going to come online. It wasn't on there last year. Once Dustin Dillahay builds his storage units, those are going to come online. We're going to have a lot of houses that are going to come online. So we have things that are coming online that are going to increase our local revenue. So just looking at our revenue situation, I think we are looking at improving next year and they are going to get more revenue. As they've already gotten this past year, we're going to get more revenue next year. <coughs> And so I'll just say, if you look at the numbers, even by going by BEP, the, the county is making up what's being cut, which is the entire purpose of how the fiscal capacity formula is structured. That's what it's supposed to do. It shifts it from the state to the local government. Now, I don't like it. I wish we had kept what we had before, but the fact of the matter is, we had a $145 million prison came on the tax rolls. We have all these houses coming on the tax rolls. And the reality is that the state looks at that and says you're a richer county, so you pay more of it. So that's why that switches it to them, from them to us. Could I ask a question? Could I ask a question, Mr. Chair? Mm -hmm. And I, I may have misunderstood, but I, if I heard you correct, you're saying that the natural growth of the economy has kept us, and we haven't been cut a penny. You got cut. I've heard of these are the BEP numbers. No. The first year, the funding from the state was seven hundred seventy-eight thousand or seven hundred, excuse me, seven million seven hundred thirty-eight thousand. This is the estimate. The next year was seven million five hundred forty thousand. 
it went down, that's a cut of $198,000. The county's local share went up $382,000. The combined federal funding for the state and local government went up $184,000 over the previous year. If you look at actuals, if you look at the actual DEP paid by the state, it went down from 1718 to 1819, $127,765. So I'm just asking for a yes or no. You're saying we haven't been cut. I'm saying you're going to, well, let's see, look at this. Your next, your current year, for 1920, you've been cut from using that 1718 as the base year. It's $19,000, but then the county's local share has went up using 1718 as a fiscal year, $567,000. You've been cut, but the reason you've been cut at state because it moved over to the county. But the county has not made it up. The county, the county revenue is, is 202,715. We see that. But that doesn't even come close to the 306 that we lost this year and the uh, 367. 367 that we intend to lose this year. It doesn't match. And here's the thing, if you'll look at this BP spreadsheet, and this is one of the things that we've talked about multiple times before, is if you'll start back in July of 1718, and you look at that red number, this county was paying almost $600,000 above the BP. That's the right, responsible thing to do. But our county's always paid more. But then when you flip to 1819, because that physical capacity, that burden from the state and local has shifted, that extra m amount has had to be used to prop up the lost state share. So the difference in year two is 700 and, I mean, 277,628. And this year, in this year's June estimate, that red number calculated from those two blue in that blue box is 147,931. Guys, these numbers are not cooked. They come from the State Department. And right now we're going into a budget year where we're our county is only contributing $147,000 above what's required by law. And what we've tried to say is, if we continue to do this, then we, you're going to force the school district to run a minimum program. And a minimum program is not what our community desires. It's not. We, we admit that the revenue from the county has gone up. But I think Mr. Kerr articulately uh, expressed about sales tax can't always be depended on. You hope it is, but people get in a tough buy, they quit buying. Sales tax goes down. Got a whole line to sales tax coming in this year in October too. So we're not we trying. Run good. I'm certainly not trying to say anything derogatory toward the mayor's calculations or anything. But I expect the same respect as well. And the things that I've given you are nothing but actualized numbers and numbers that come from the state and the BEP. I haven't tried to manipulate any numbers at all. But the facts are there and they're undisputed. And we're losing about $800,000 a year. And we had some things where we had some fuel electricity that we didn't use. And if you look at that budget, we only lost about $583,000, which that was lessened a little bit. But we're losing half a million dollars a year. Your budget shows you that. You're going from about $4.5 million to about three point nine. And you know what next year is going to look like. You've got it. You've got two scenarios. One with making up the amount that we're losing this year, and one without. And even with the one that you're making up. And the state, again, is trying to give local governments a three-year phasing period. And what's so important here is that this physical capacity does not go away. It's not like tonsillitis or something. And, you know, sooner or later we're going to get better and everything's going to be all right. It's 306 this year. I mean, this past year. 
378 something this year. It'll be more than that next year and every year thereafter. And I just don't, and, I, and I've said this before, I, for all of us, superintendents, board members, commissioners, I just don't think it's really where you, it, it's not the educational system you want to provide for your children and your grandchildren and the people who's moved in our county to be a part of our schools, to tell them that you're running a minimum basic program. And just two years ago, you were funding schools at about $600,000 above the minimum. And, uh, how much are we above the minimum now, huh? 147000 is what it looks like. That's on that last sheet. Does that take into consideration what all the county's taking on at the state's no, bill this year? No, sir. That's another thing. I am not trying to manipulate, massage, mislead the numbers. Those numbers are straight. This is straight off the state BEP funding. Those numbers haven't been touched. I think Mr. Gulley said somewhere beside me, somehow as a commissioner, you can access these things, right? We do have access, though. Yes. Yeah. Right. You know, you, you, can, you, can, you can get those yourself. You don't even need me to print those for you. And our budget that I've got in front of you is exactly what the Budget and Finance Committee asked of me the last time we met that we won't actualize numbers. We have done that. We have a good picture now. Yeah, but the, the picture is a little murky because you're, you've got a set of numbers and you've got a set of numbers and they don't jive. Ms. Jackson, my numbers come from the state. My, my numbers from the budget came but, from audited numbers. So where is his numbers coming from? You have to ask him that. I mean, I'm not questioning I'm using the same numbers, numbers as right here. That mm -hmm. When he ended up with the percentages on it, that's a what if. That's using the percentages he said we dropped from then to now and applying that say percentage of this current funding that would be that last number he said we would have more than that but that's only half the story you also have to look at the other half we'd stay the same the county would have been spending less money for the local share and in that 1819 local match department one million nine hundred fifty nine thousand dollars the actual revenue coming into the school system is two million six hundred fifteen thousand eight hundred nine dollars that's six hundred fifty six thousand eight hundred nine dollars above the required local match if you take off the 306000 that the cut was, that's $350,809 above the $306,000 loss of revenue. So I'm just saying that there's growth there. I'm not telling you not to give them what he's asking for. I'm just saying that if you look at what would have been on percentages, that to me, I like to look at what actual numbers is. If you go around through these and look through the numbers, you'll see what the actual cuts are, the actual circumstances we're in. And that's that's all I'm trying to say. I'm not saying he's cooking the books or and I'm doing not anything saying the mayor's nefarious. Cooking books. I'm not trying I'm not <laughs> saying that. No. I'm not saying he's doing anything nefarious. I'm just saying he's coming here, he's presenting you how they see it. I see it differently. That's all. I just look is at yours based on a, is yours based on a re the revenue increase? Mine's based over on this, looking at over the numbers. property tax increase? No. I mean, I'm just not, I didn't mean, I meant over the property tax. Yours includes uh, revenue. Mine includes everything. Revenue. Every, every, lo every revenue stream attributable to the local government. Which is, so all the revenue, the other right. money, where. That's, that's beyond, that's, that's property tax, that's TVA payment on the tax money, that's mixed drink tax, that's business tax, trustees collections, clerk and master's collections, interest and penalty. Local option sales tax, business tax, interstate telecommunications tax would be on there, but we don't really collect any. Marriage license fees, which admittedly is not a lot. So every, if you go down there and look through the budget, every attributable revenue that could come from the local government, that's why I've got that number from. The point Did that you I say 202? From that's what? From estimated last year to actual this year is 202. We've got 202,715. No, I is said change in local. I said if you got one million nine hundred fifty nine thousand that was acquired local match from last year, the eighteen nineteen year, and then look at the actual revenue that came in is two million six hundred fifteen thousand eight oh nine. The point I'm trying to make, Mr. Chairman, is that we have an education committee, which 
got started this year and started in November. And we started talking about these, had Mr. Roberts, or Robertson, whatever, Wesley here at that, at that meeting and, and stuff. And I think we could have had a lot of that worked out before now, but we had to wait till now to get these other, you know what I'm saying? If had this information been, saying, been earlier. I don't know, we could have come, back, come in here back earlier, even in that meeting, he was 900,000 short. And then he comes back and he wants 367,000. That's a heck of an improvement. Yes, it is. Uh, I mean, we, we recognize that we're better than I thought I was two or three months ago. That's exactly right. I mean, we, we don't argue that fact. And the growth next year is stronger right now than it was at this time last year. So next year, you're going to be getting more money, uh, property tax, etc. cetera. Um, How are we going to get more property tax? Well, because you're going to have a lot more base. You're going to have a lot more homes built, a lot more industry. Oh, okay. Okay. Our property tax okay. this year from where we estimated went up $34,000. And he's figured on 92%. Wesley said you conservatively can figure it on 95%. What did y'all do the county budget? I on? think he figured it 92. So but we collected between 101 and 102% this year too. Yes, that helped everybody. Yeah, I'm not trying to argue. I just wonder what y'all said y'all said. I think we should do the same thing. State says you said it 92%. Right. But Wesley told me and the mayor that we could set it as high as 95 because we've had such a good record in collecting taxes in Drysdale County. But y'all not going to do that. I don't know. I didn't, ask I didn't know which where you going got your there. budget. I didn't know what it was based on. I think he based it on 92, which is standard state state figure. Right. Guys, I, look, look here. On page two, state of Tennessee, line, revenue line, 465.11, basic education program. That's every one of those allocation sheets that you have in your hand. And if you look at 1718 and compare it to this year, 1920, we have not gained any money in the BEP. We've lost sixty-nine thousand dollars. I understand that the uh, BEP contribution has gone down. Ain't nobody but, denying that. But the state and the local, but the local government has contributed more. But look at the last page. Look at the last page of this handout. Over the same period of time, mandatory teacher raises have gone up one hundred thirty-five four eighty-eight. And health insurance has gone up three hundred thousand. That's four hundred four thirty six two eighty eight. That's the inflationary measures that are going up. You're getting less money, and your charges are going up. And that's not a that's not a new program. That's not a new that's not a new program. That's not adding new personnel. <laughs> You're getting That's less not money getting any raises. From, you're getting less money from the BEP. Yes. Yes. Well, no one's denying that. that. No one's saying that you're not. That's good. Everyone I mean, agrees. Everybody recognizes. That. Everyone recognizes that you're getting less money from the state with the BEP. And then the next, the next catch is that the gains in local revenue are not keeping up with what we want. Not according to what the numbers he presented. If you look, and you can take that budget, the first page, and look at the local revenue, and look at the 1718 revenue, and you look at that middle column, the 1819 local revenue, it's about $200,000. Correct, Angie? That's it. That's all you gained in local revenue. And remember, these budgets are not estimated. This budget is money. I'm going on the on the budget, Mr. Farmer. Look here. If you'll go to the, the thick one. The thick one. Okay. And if you'll go down to local, total local taxes. And if you'll look at 1718 and compare that to 1819. The difference will be about two hundred thousand dollars, a little bit more than that. That doesn't catch up with what we lost. We lost three hundred six last year. We're going to learn three eighty seven something this year. 
All I'm saying is that we're getting less from the state. We're not keeping up by the county. Look at the budget. The fund balance is going backwards. What you're saying is your expenses are going up. My Insurance, expense. teachers, yes. and all that. A exactly. At a point where we're not adding a single person, we're not adding a new program, and we're not giving any raises to our people. Well, this year. That, but that money, but here's here's key. Your fund, your BP has decreased. Exactly. $69,000. $69, you can see that just plain as day. And then the mandatory teacher raises has gone up one thirty five. Add those together, and that's a deficit in itself. And when he says teacher raises, he's talking about on the BEP side. Trustal County has right. not contributed right. anything in a long time. And those raises, just like your elected officials, I heard y'all talking here about uh, the circuit court clerk or the mayor or the highway, the sheriff has to get a raise this year because it's mandatory by the state. I've heard y'all use that language, right? Well, they, the same thing happens with our teachers. You know, they send more money in the BEP, but then it has to go out to teachers. Mm -hmm. And you can see on that revenue item that we're getting less in the BEP. And, the, and then our fixed charges are going up at a time. And then if we don't keep, keep up with these inflationary costs, then we can't help our people and we can't help our students because the, because the insurance is going to continue to go up. These fixed charges and, and teachers you said insurance went up three hundred thousand. Angie, is that correct? Mm -hmm. How did it go up three hundred thousand? Well, you ever heard of Affordable Health Care Act? Mm -hmm. And uh, an employee can't make, but I mean, you can't charge them, but nine point something percent of their salary. Uh, we haven't been known to pay our non-certified people a great deal, so then. Their insurance policy is high. They're not making a lot. Then we have to pay that. We have to pay that for their insurance. And then we've also, with affordable health care, some industries have done something, and they've tried to push people onto us. Have we seen spouses coming on us a little bit more? So affordable health care act has a great deal to do with that right there. And as you know, that's still the law of the land. So you're saying you uncertified people is what's pushed you the insurance up. We didn't, we didn't used to pay you insurance for that. Yeah. And the Affordable Care Act required you to. Yes. We only pay. This, look, this is not good. I, I'm ashamed to say this. But one too long ago, <laughs> we only paid 10% of our non-certified health insurance. 10%. But Affordable Health Care changed that drastically. And that's required by law. We can't change that. We can't reduce that benefit. Well, basically, I see is it's not that you've lost that much money. It's that you've been spending out more money. It's a candle burning on two ends. It's revenue and expenditures. But you've got to hear that the expenditures are not something that we're doing extravagant. Hey, we're only... One hundred forty-seven thousand dollars above not running a minimum program. We're only one hundred forty-seven thousand dollars above running a minimum program, which is required by law. And then somebody calls my office today and wants to know when we're going to hire a baseball coach. Hmm. I don't even know if we're going to have a baseball team or a baseball coach. I don't. I can't. I, I, I'm worried about. I'm worried about twelve hundred students having an appropriate high quality public education. That's what we should be doing for our children. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Chairman, may I ask you questions? Yes, ma'am. I've been listening to you talk. Now, I grant you, I'm an elderly lady. I'm 73 years old. You come at me with all these numbers, and when you come in with me with these numbers, I've got to get my glasses situated and I've got to find the number and look at it. Yes. Um, and in doing this and in getting the calculator out, your numbers just don't seem to match up with my calculator. And when your numbers don't match up with my calculator and my calculator 
it's not my finger doing it. I have my son to do the, the item because my count, my finger just don't work right either. And so I let somebody's younger fingers do it. Now, you told me that you got seven, uh, 9,000 rather, excuse me, 9,499,000 9, from BEP and that was what you were operating on. And I thought, Woo, that's not very much money. So I went up and I talked with the mayor. And I said, is that all he's operating on? And the mayor says, no. And he showed me that you're getting federal money too. You're not showing us federal money. Federal. No, uh, uh, it's my turn to talk now. I've listened to you for a long time. It's my turn. Okay. So it said up here then on your paper here that you operated on $11,442,000. Um, $865, uh, okay? And that you were operating on a deficit of $500, eight, uh, $583,000. dollars So I added the $10 million, uh, and subtracted it from the $11 million. I didn't get that number. When the thing uh, was uh, separated out, I did not get the uh, 583, uh, 583,000 in all those numbers. I got 539. So if your calculator is messing up that much, where else is your calculator messing up? That's what I want to know. Ms. Thomas, all these numbers in this budget, they, every one of these numbers come from the state of Tennessee. That's I don't care numbers. where they came from. But I want to know how accurate they are. Because you're, you're asking, 100% accurate. Uh, uh, it's my turn. It's my turn. I want to know where they're coming from because you're asking us to raise people's taxes. And I'm one of those people you're asking to raise taxes. Now, my husband has had open heart surgery. So now we're on a very limited budget, a very tight budget. So when you're asking me, I'm trying to help other people out with because I've got some rental houses and I don't charge them a whole lot of rent. So that means that I've got to come up with places that are not rented that we're trying to sell so that I can make a living or I can live in this without being homeless. And you're trying to make me raise my taxes so that I won't even be able to live in my own home, much less have these other places. Now, don't mess with my money. Now, when I find that you're messing up even just a few cents, that makes me come in question about your calculator. Not you, your calculator. These are actually done on Excel, Excel spreadsheet. They automatically calculate themselves. It's not even my calculator. It's a computer program. Then and why are the they, numbers different? Maybe you need to take it up with these. Uh, can you? Can you? I can explain. Okay. If you look at the rest, the uh, transfer out to food service, there's your missing forty-four thousand. Where? Where is that? Right above the five hundred eighty-three thousand. You're on page sixteen, right? The very last page mm -hmm. of the budget. And I can explain some of that. Some of that are those raises that we worked on getting our non-certified people over the years. And then that's in 141, general purpose, that's where the tax money comes from. Thank and you very we, much. And then we do a transfer to, to food I, service 143. I want to know where all these monies are going because you're asking us to do a big job for all these people. Yes, ma'am. And what we do here affects everybody in and counting you. I pay taxes. And, and yes, taxes. sir. So, you know, I'm watching you. I'm watching you and I'm watching every other department here. And, so. the, and, you sh and the, just the thing is be aware of these numbers are not my numbers. These are came from the state. In that budget that you have, a column on the left and a column in the middle. Why did you have to give us so many pieces of paper? Because I want to be transparent. And no, I, we haven't even looked at this sheet, these bunch of papers. We've looked at these. Now, why did we need these? Well, one of them's the budget. The thick one's the budget. 
the two pager is the one without the three hundred and sixty seven thousand dollars are we going to go over this one then shortly we can uh I, I thought i did and the only thing that i wanted to show you is it has two highlighted areas and that's the changes in revenue and then what that change right, would be what that. that change would be in fund balance well, the this revenue page would right be, here. Mm -hmm. I think you have the budget. Yes, sir. Okay. Then why did we, oh, you're giving this just so we can look over. I'll give you that first. That's the actual budget. I, I, I you, no, I need to talk to you. I don't need to talk to you. The, All right. The, the, the 16 page document that you have is This is what we're supposed to look over and vote up. This, yes, ma'am. That's the budget yes. submitted from the uh, Board of Education to the Mayor's office today. And this is the budget that is before the uh, Budget and Finance committee this evening. So it's how a much do you say we have to raise taxes? I can't understand why your figures are not driving out with the mayor. Yes, Mr. Arthur. We've got a very tight budget here and the mayor has asked all departments to uh, to, to be conscious of that and, and it looked like that was the case as we had the budget hearings. and. You do have a, a good fund balance, and it might be some things that we could do in the future, in addition to growth, that might could help you in years to come that might not be so practical this year in such a tight budget year because we've got some things that are not going to be reoccurring expenses that we're having to address this year. So another thing is if you're not, and this is something we've talked about here, that you know, it's kind of dropped in our last meeting, but you know, we're, we've got some uh, capital outlay things. And I think everybody that's done any type of research will agree that the middle school re roof needs to be addressed. And maybe one of the things that this body might consider, uh, you know, I'd have to take it up with the board, uh, we talked about it briefly, is would the commission be interested in uh, you know, if you're going to run the fund balance down, where we no longer can take care of capital outlays, and we're going to have to come to you for money, if you're willing to take that on, then we could start with the middle school roof and fix that right now and do less damage to that building. That's a non-reoccurring expense. It doesn't, uh, they changed the law about three years ago. It doesn't go against maintenance of effort. And it would certainly allow us to go into fund balance deeper at the same time that we're getting that roof and then to reevaluate where we are next year. You know, we're not at the two, maybe we would not be at the 2.3. Maybe we could save some money. You know, if gasoline, you know, a war with Iran could drive up all of your fuel prices really fast. And you never know how that's going to do. Really? Two ships are cooked today. So one of the things that we had talked about mm -hmm. was maybe addressing that roof in this year. Of course, what my philosophy was, was to uh, work on some things that we needed to, about $600,000 worth to draw from capital outlay, and then see what the fund balance looked like next year, and then maybe address the roof. But if we're gonna run fund balance down to 2.3, remember, a healthy fund balance, according to Wesley Robertson, is about 3.6 million and either one of those budget proposals that you have does not put us at that threshold it puts us below that threshold well you've got 3.9 that's correct you have 131,000 in restricted funds yeah but here, here's the thing well, here, this is important the 3.9 includes every bit every of restricted thing. unrestricted committee that's assigned right. i mean it's but everything below that 131, you and your board can do anything you want to do with it, well, including okay. committing. We cannot, we cannot do that. We can't spend a penny of it without county commission approval. Well, you've never come to us now. I've come to you every time. Not, not to spend your that money. We've spent most of our capital outlay, right? Our, you should our be spending your committee. It's what you should be spending. And Wesley told us that too. But y'all don't spend your committee. You drop down into your unrestricted. We've used our capital outlay fund balance mm -hmm. to work on capital outlay projects. That's what it was designated for by the Board of Education and 
by the county commission. Yeah, we're using it for the purpose there. for which it was it was designated. I think Mr. Horace is saying to you in a nutshell, our backs are against the wall this year. If I learned anything a few years ago when I wrote the county commissioner, there's a lot of people out there just like this lady right here. No telling how many homes that I went into and the first thing they'd ask you, Mr. Ford, if you win, please don't raise my taxes no more. Now there may not be any of us in here that that hurts. But I'm going to tell you something. These elderly people out there living on a fixed income, it hurts. And what I think Mr. Parrish was saying to you, our backs are stapled to the wall this year. And everything that we got going out is none recurring. So next year, we're going to be in a better position to step up to the plate and try to do more. Besides that, growth in this county is considerably more than it was last year which means our base is going to be broadened. <laughs> Barring any unforeseen catastrophe, like another landfill up yonder, who knows? <clears throat> but as of right now, that's one of the things that's hurting us. Well, you've heard uh, Mr. Satterfield's proposal. You heard what the mayor had to say. They're both in total disagreement. I'm not going to say who's right and who's wrong. Yes, Linda. If I can speak just on one thing, I think when with that conversation you said, the mayor having a disagreement with Mr. Satterfield, Mr. Satterfield having a little disagreement with his numbers. I think the the number that I'm looking at when I sit here and look is the 147,931. When we look back, these are hard numbers. This is what we as we as county commissioners, we got an email a couple weeks ago. We can go look this up. We can go look at any county around us. This is the amount we are mandatory to pay. Uh, and that's the conversation we're talking about. Over in blue, highlighted in blue, uh, written in red ink, on, uh, I'm on a page which says 2019-2020. Uh, uh, this was the June estimate. Uh, and I'm sure there's been a little bit of an update we can still get to now. What page are you on, Len? Uh, I'm in the three-page document. The one that Mr. Sheffield has right. some... Uh, uh, some percents on on the back. Starting here, but I'm actually looking over at the, these are Mr. Satterfield's numbers, uh, and I know he took them from this other piece right here. But I, what I want to look at is exactly what we, as the county commissioner, can go look at right now, and we can go pull this up right here, and that's our mandatory. That's what Mr. Uh, our mayor was talking about. These are our mandatory funds, and you can you can trace exactly what the mayor said. To a T now. That BP has, has decreased. BP has, uh, the county had to take on more funds. It cost the county more. Then what Mr. Satterfield said, we go back and look, turn to the back, the, the, what would actually be the uh, 2017 2018 on the same document. You'll see that that red number, you see the red number there, which was $582,129. I think the disagreement of numbers we're talking about is right there. There's where the county at a point was giving uh, 582,000. This number is not an actual spend number. That is our maintenance of effort number. Our actual spend in this column for the 18-19 fiscal year, I mean, our actual spend was $2,615,809. The required local match was $1,959,000. The actual local revenue going into the school system was $656,809 above the local match requirements. That is a maintenance efforts number. It's not a, the actual amount so, spent by the county. So the $2,236,628 is not? That's the floor. We can't go below that. That's correct. Even though the, the required local match is lower correct. than that number, correct. the maintenance of effort, we cannot go below that. We spent $277,628 more that year on no, that No, the difference between the local match and the maintenance of effort number is that red number. Correct. I'm arguing the difference between the local match and the actual amount that the county paid in revenue is $656,809. So it'd be... Now in that revenue, you're, con you're counting all uh, of... I'm, I'm counting all revenue streams from the local government. That's the taxes, permits, license fees, rental fees, everything that could contribute. Here we're just talking tax numbers. In this 
This is well, this is talking this, this, this is this is talking tax numbers. No, that's paying. That's what you have to put in, no matter what it comes from. When that local revenue is added up, it has to be either higher than the maintenance of effort or higher than the local match. If we had been like some other counties that only gave the schools what the local match required, those numbers would be the same. But since they've been funded higher than that, the maintenance of effort number is higher than the required local match. The only thing I'm saying is the required local match number, you should compare it to actual revenue numbers. That's the only thing I'm saying, not the maintenance of effort because it's a misleading number because it's what it's the floor of what we can go for. And that's why I was saying that you're both saying, uh, you both have a, a very valid point here of peace. Well, just as I said, we have a different way of looking at it. That's and all I said. The blue box is what you're talking about. Certainly portrays the lessening of the impact of local dollars over a three-year period of time from about 588 to 147. That's indisputable. I mean, you can call it whatever you like, but it, and that that number is a maintenance of effort. That is correct. But it's still a good number in looking at the impact of local contribution. That's what it's called. It's called local contribution. That's what he's saying. That's not correct. Close enough. I tell you what. If we're going, if we're going to argue with the state numbers, we might as well go out there and no. argue with sign numbers. Because that's that's. I mean, I can't I can't manipulate that. No one else in this room can. Let me let me say let me say that I have it correct. Okay. This the number you're saying that is the maintenance of effort number, which is the number that we have to contribute because that's the number that's the amount we have given before and we can't get go below. It's based on past spending. Past. It's based on past spending, and they get accustomed to certain level of spending. Right. I hate to say I don't want to compare it to alimony, but it kind of works the same way. <laughs> yeah. It gives, yeah. So that's so what it is. You can't go below that, no matter what the local match is. The local match could be one dollar, and your funding could be two point three million. You still have can't go below two point three million. Um, so the county could go crap, and we could have no money coming in, but we would still be required to do that maintenance effort, right? There may be. I'm, I mean, unless, I know that's just a just, scenario thrown out, scenario. but I would just say in that situation, I'm sure there's probably some kind of safety right. valve legislation right. somewhere. But on a normal thing, no matter. Yeah, well, then we real, reasonable circumstances, circumstances, we can't go below that number. Just go it's just like you can't go below this floor. That's what it is. But that's not the actual number that we get. That's not the actual revenue number. That's maintenance of effort, which is calculated based on past rev, past funding, and it comes out at a certain number. It just It's like drop, dropping it onto a Plinko board. It goes through the system, and what comes out is the maintenance of effort number. Okay. All right, so we actually gave a whole lot more than that number. Well, we gave, like I said, and this is using all possible local revenue going off their estimates and everything. It was $2,615,809. That's all local revenue that went to the school board last year. And so that's the difference of how much over the maintenance of effort? No, that's the difference between the, the required local match, which is this number right here. Okay. All right. But the number in the blue that is, that is our, the low that we can't go below. Well, this... This one right here is the one we can't go below. And, and what is the difference from what we actually gave and what is we can't go below? How much did you get? This one, I figured it out. We should okay. get to the correct number. It's three hundred seventy-nine thousand one hundred eighty-nine. All right. So does that make up the difference in the loss of the BP? Well, I think you said it was three hundred seventy-six, three seventy, three sixty-seven, zero oh, seven eight. This year. Right. This year. Three oh six last year. All right. So, so that one year you actually made how much? Well, you would have to compare it. This is FY19 financial number. You have to compare it to FY19 BEP calculation because the 20 is just based on the allocation we've been given by the state and those state numbers. Obviously, we don't have actual revenue for the 2020 year because we're just now starting. So I would just say you'd have to compare it to the 19 year, which is what they're saying, the loss 306. Okay, 306. So it looks like based on those numbers that we are keeping up or exceeding the difference in the BEP. I'm for the FY19 fiscal year, the amount of revenue that came in was six hundred and something thousand dollars more than the required local match, and it was three hundred seventy-nine one eighty-one over 
the maintenance of everything. And then I think it totally went up, I think it's 200 and something thousand dollars. If you're looking at just like I said, well, I've got two different here. All the possible local revenue, they budgeted $2,332,931. They had rev actual revenue of $2,615,809. So he had surf excess there coming from the local government of the budgeted amount of 279,586. But I mean, that's going to happen because you have to under, underestimate your revenues. So I'm just saying. But all in all, that that number is still over the 306 that, that you lost, correct? Is that correct? I don't know what I don't know what y'all do. We're cooking sure. numbers. <laughs> I'm comparing the actual local revenue to not subtracting the required local match, and that's yeah. I'm getting the six. What was it 689? I think. Yeah. And then if you compare the actual revenue number to the maintenance of effort. The actual revenue number was 379181 over the maintenance of effort. And this is one of the things why we talked about. If the commission would consider taking all the capital outlay, that doesn't contribute to maintenance of effort. Why would a whole lot do that it's not, a re, it's not a, tax? It's not, that's right. And it's not, a reoccurring, <laughs> it's not a reoccurring expense, is what I'm saying. We've done that before. That would be a lot more agreeable than increasing so property tax. Your budget, you're more three hundred sixty-seven dollars more dollars. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, if if you're not going to do because that's reoccurring and because you're concerned about maintenance of effort, then look at one, look at a capital outlay need and address that. Well, it only affects thirty-eight percent of the people in the in the county too. That they're going to bear the burden of. Well, just just remember now, if you'll go back and look at the, the sheets I gave you in 2000, you know, the BP allocations from 1718, you know, when this prison came on the books, you know, schools were cut 17 cents then, and then this income of $1.8 million, I guess, a year in revenue from the prison, has now came onto the books, and you can see the state has shifted the financial burden of schools less from the state and more to the local. No one's denying that. That's and what the mayor said. Yeah. Exactly. Well, we're saying the same thing. But what I'm saying is, and you can look at the budget and you can see the fund balance is going down. I think I mean, a lot of that's your insurance and some of your other things that you need on. But I still have to pay insurance and salaries. I mean, they don't go away. Yeah, but that, that's exactly that's what I'm saying. Going. It's not going because you're losing it here. I'm losing money from the BP. There's no question about it. Do you That's take right. those state allocations? You can look at the percentages no, and you can, look at the, you can look at the budget but and tell us. You're it up from the local revenue, though. I don't, I don't think the $202,000 that we made in additional local revenue this year has come close to making to the 306 that we lost this year. It, it hasn't covered it. What about the 379 181 difference. I, I don't know what he's doing over there. I can't speak to that. And I don't want to use a word. So I don't want to be, I want to be professional here. I think I'm pretty clear. I took the actual revenue number for the FY19 year and I subtracted the required local match of $1,959,000 and I left you 689 plus. That's all. You might want to calculate it and do it right here sitting at your table if you want. I can take the state spreadsheet and I can see that we're getting less money from the state. I can look at that budget and I can tell that fund balance is going down. I can look at those line items and I can see what's going up in teacher salaries. I can see what's going up in insurance. That's why I gave you the 16 page document for you to look at and go over in time, is what I'm saying. Go ahead, I'll let you speak. The only thing, I, and as you just ran down through the discussion that's been repeated over and over, and every no one's disputing the state numbers, no one's dis disputing the BEP, but the one thing you're not mentioning is what the county is actually giving you in revenue. 202. 
$202,000. We see that. We've, we've said that all day long. But that seems to be the disputed part. It's not the state's contribution. I'm not disputing that. But between the mayor and you, that seems to be the dis dispute here, is how much the county is actually giving the school. $202,000 more than last year. We lost 306 from the BEP last year. There's a difference in those two numbers. And you can trace it by looking at those BEP allegation sheets. I can't, I can't come off of that. I mean, that's, it is what it is. No one's denying the loss in the BEP numbers. And this is, and this is not a calculation or anything. It's just, is do we have the will? to address a revenue shortfall that began last year, that grows this year, and will grow next year, and will continue forever. We'll be better, in a better position to address this next year. I remember something you told me and the mayor that really bothered me. You said you was only interested in expenditures. You wouldn't worry no, about revenue. No, no, I didn't say yes, I would be there. No, sir. Yes, I sir. said, I you said, said that I spend my time. I spend my time <laughs> in expenditures. That's and right. you'll tell you that I can't control the revenue. It is what it is. I, yeah, but it's what gives you your fund balance at the end. I know, of the year. but I can't. You're the fund. <laughs> this is the funding body. You levy taxes. You allocate money to departments. This is a revenue body. I'm only an expenditure body. I can't control revenue. And that's what we're saying. Even that's the mayor. what the mayor's saying. It's you're not accepting all the revenue that he's telling you you've got. I'm taking table. every penny he sends our way. <laughs> I have not rejected any. <laughs> Please tell me if I rejected any funds. <laughs> <laughs> but our fund balance continues to go down. You can see that. The issue is, are you going to address it or not? And there's an option. You can, you could work, you could address that roof. How much is that roof? 830,000. How much? 830 is what she said. 830,000. That's, we got a quote. That's what he has one quote. The way I'm looking at it, $367,000 ain't going to make you or break you this year one way or the other. That's what you're asking for, isn't it? Yes, sir. But we lost 306 last year. And you can see the fund balance going from 4.9 to 3, I mean from 4.5 to 3.9. 3 and then you can see it going into the twos next year. So how long, you know, funding body, how long are you going to let that bleed is what I'm saying. I mean, you're the funding body. We're not. We're the expenditure. And here on the expenditure side, and I do say that I, I make my, I do my work in the expenditure side. And the budget that's before you has no raises, no new personnel, no new programs. We feel like we've done everything that we can to keep a hand on the spigot. Does this year. A, does the state this mandate year. your salary like they do the elected officials? They do for teachers, yes. I'm Certified for, for me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I have to make a teacher salary. I have to. I do you get a bonus money. every year? Or? I get a bonus if I, meet, if I meet certain allocations. Well, let's look at that for a minute. Mm -hmm. um, have a little class here. Let's go to... 72, 320. 72, 320. 320. What? 320. That's just my receipt. If you'll go to page 10. Page 10, and if you look at the second category, and you just call that category 72, 320, Director of Schools, and it says 101, County Official Administrative 
officer. And if you'll look at this year, that middle column, $95,000. Mayor, what's your salary? 76, 70, what? 78,600. You don't have the whole county to worry about. And you in here, why don't you give some of your salary up for all these students that you're so worried about? And that's a lot less than the other counties do. We ain't worried about the other counties. We worried about this one and making the budget meet for this county. And that's a starting salary for the mayor. I don't give a yes, care about starting salary. For a while. I don't give a care, Pre Regina. Pre I'm sorry. Pre but he's wanting all this money for the schools. And the mayor, who has in charge of the whole county, makes less than he does. How, how, how large is the county budget? How large is the county budget? Six million? How much? I don't care. He's got responsibility. Does he get, does he get the county. seven million? Does That's get ridiculous. To okay. Our, our budget ridiculous. is what? 12 million. 6 million. Budget twice as large, right? How many employees does the mayor's office supervise? We supervise 187 million. Right. Second largest employer in the county. The salary is something of fifty-two ten to nine thousand. That that your is there too. That that is the bonus that you were alluding to. The one forty. That bonus is based off of uh, certain achievement indicators. Well, we don't need to get in a mudslinging contest about all that. What we're here for is to take a look at this budget and see if we want to forward on to the or to the uh, commission on Monday night with approval of his budget, or do we want to send the budget back? And that's what we're here to discuss tonight. We barely have a quorum, but we have a quorum. Mr. Harvest. Move to send the budget back. So here's a second. I'll second. Second with Ms. Jones. Any other discussion on it? Yes, I like I said, I would much rather to consider a possible capital outlay than a property tax. I don't see the property tax. Well, that's what I'm saying. Besides yeah. sending the budget back, and I've got four board members here, they cannot make a decision, but we could sort of like look at them. I guess they could speak on their own behalf. Well, there again, we can't we can't tell you that uh, we can do that. That's something the whole commission's got to do. That's what I'm saying, though. But instead of sending it back and waiting ten days, and you can't pass anything on Monday. I mean, is there a possibility you could work something out? I mean, I think this process has gone long enough, is what I'm saying. And if there's middle or common ground somewhere, then would it be worth our time, I think, to open that discussion? Just, yes, one, just to clarify, the, the school board, did they approve this budget as the submittal, or did they also they, approve the exhibit? The they, option two. They submitted the one I sent you. This one. This, this one. Okay. Yeah, I did not send you anything else. No, I was just, I was just asking. I'm okay. not saying you did anything. I'm just asking okay. for approval by the school board. It was this 16-page budget, and yes. Exhibit B was not part of the school board. Okay, I just want yes. clarification. Yes. Right <laughs> Is there any discussion in regards? Well, we've got a motion. Of second on the floor and we've got to dispense with that for the time being. I guess we could have discussion on another subject. Can't have another motion on another subject. Uh, Mayor, do you want to put any input in on that? I think I said just about everything I had to say. I mean, I went over it. I'm, like I said, it's just a different way of looking at it. I look at it based on calculation what the actual numbers are. I don't get into what percentages of what it would have been. If, it, if the prison had never came and this, I just look at what the numbers are year over year, and that's what my calculation is. 
think we'll be in a better position uh, next year to address some of these things where we're having these one-time expenditures that it's like the landfill having to clean that mess up and, and and other issues like that this year just making it extremely difficult and hate to raise people's property tax when we might could better address this in another year and he does have a fund balance that's going to be able to, to take care of it at this time well that's for sure so we, we got the land we got the land fill us what 300 and something thousand a fire yeah, truck of two, of uh, fire, fire truck, truck. 280, 280 and yeah. this land uh, streetscape is 187 i think sure. 180 175 190. no they're coming back next yeah. year what will our fund balance be estimated mayor i know this is a general term but where would we be with all the expenditures as mr gregory had just mentioned with our ending fund balance 12 months from now Less about seven hundred and fifty thousand. You're yeah. asking what it would be no, without the. No, no, with all the things that we mentioned that are. Well, if you're looking at the one on one, the landfill's not in the one on one. The landfill's in the one sixteen. Okay. But some of the things that is in the one on one is the five hundred thousand dollar home grant. Okay. Then there's twenty thousand dollar for the built environment grant, and there's a couple other things. I think it was a what? Well, yeah, eight hundred. Two hundred eighty-five thousand dollars for the fire truck, I believe, and I'm going off. I don't have the paper I calculated on right in front of me. I believe the non-recurring amounts were nine hundred and fifteen thousand dollars, and the recurring amounts that's in the budget would be one hundred eighteen four eighty-six. So I, I, I didn't calculate what the difference would be in the fund balances, but just to kind of get an idea. Our recurring or non-recurring this year. Is nine hundred fifteen thousand dollars, and that includes all grant funds that have to come in and go out. But our recurring expenditures that would be increased from last year, one hundred eighteen thousand four hundred eighty-six, and that's mainly for the sheriff's department of longevity increases. Yeah, that's part I guess of where I'm going with this is, is I just kind of want to the last figure. Our fund balance in the county is what here in the next. Well, it projected the next by the budget that we submitted and that has been approved by the budget finance. Our one-on-one fund balance we estimate on June 30th, 2020 is $2,207,960. I guess where I'm going with this is, is we do the idea that Ms. Jones had talked about and this leak at the school, I don't know if it could be put off another year. So could we then take that hit too? I mean, I don't know. I'm asking. $830,000. That's a, that's a chunk. No, you can't take $830,000. Yeah, it's a 2.2 fund balance. I dare you not go on every fund balance. Right? Yeah. You take a long pension. <laughs> yep, so you're going to pay that back too. Oh, um, no. School boards cannot yeah. issue a bid. The only funding I can have my school that gets is from That's why he thinks about it. Finishing all the time because he can't control it. I get that. And that's what I've said. I, I don't live in a rare new world. I just say buyer beware. I've seen this commission do this in the past where we would wait till the next year and wait till the next year. And then I said on the budget finance committee where you were there to excuse me, ma'am, I thought, please don't interrupt me. Mm -hmm. We went to a negative fund balance because we were. I'm not. I'm not proposing a tax increase. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. Buyer beware. With the things we're doing, we'll come back to visit us. We're not here. Well, I have seen. Well, I've seen and seen it before. They would get to. I don't think they've asked for a tax increase. Not it. Not. I'm just. I'm just saying. You know, these are some things we're talking about. So if we don't, when we're thinking in lieu of. So you're saying you think we could easily we could take the three hundred and something thousand dollar hit now easier than we could possibly take? I have I don't know that I meant I don't want to mention any solution to that. I'm just saying just be thinking about what we're doing. I want to know I already kind of felt like I knew the answer and you just confirmed it that it's an eight hundred thousand dollar hit on a middle school roof if that's a good do a capital athlete project on this. You could I mean you could borrow. That'd be another topic for discussion. But if we're going to say we're not going to do this, we might do this. I mean, that's a problem that exists now. I'm just saying that's something we can we're not in a good spot. I mean, we're just not. And we got all these other expenditures that Mr. Gregory mentioned that we got to take. I mean, we're already on the hook for those. 
It's just a, but Mr. Harsh's, I mean, there's a lot of what he's saying too. Maybe we can just snip along. I don't feel good about that though. I mean, I, I don't have an answer. I'm just saying, buyer beware, because you know, we've, done, we, we've been down this path before. And it, never, it, it seems to catch up to you. So I don't, I don't have to. That's the only nice thing. What my point is, we not well, there's true. not a good solution. No. <laughs> it ain't. No. But I do agree with the superintendent. I think that our school systems have come along so much, and it takes funding to do that. I, I mean, we've won the score prize twice. You know, we've got excellent school teachers here. Uh, there's one thing that this county can really toot its horn about right now is to look at what we've done education-wise. In a short amount of time, to be quite honest, in my opinion, uh, I don't, I fear that if you don't, at some point, correct these deficiencies somehow, and I'm not saying I got the answer to it, but that's going to start to whittle away. And then we know where we've been in the past or something. It's just it's something to worry about. I don't know. I don't know. Any, other, any other comments on this? We can't spend all that on it. Chairman, one of the things that we've done over the years is we've tried to take our fund balance, be frugal, and try to use our fund balance, and we've used their, almost every bit of them capital outlays. You know, we renovated the middle school, put a new heat and cooling system in there. We've uh, done about three, complete about the third renovation phase of the elementary school. And we've done that without any tax increase to taxpayers. We've been able to do that with fund balance funds. And we've extended the life of those buildings as opposed to coming to you and ask you to build a $40,000 school. I mean, oh, you're yeah, 40 million. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, hey, if we can get that, we need to jump on it. We've got a 40 million dollar school. And uh, <laughs> how much debt did the county accept three years ago? Hold on. We and Mr. Carmen went that deal out. You're paying. A, looks like you're paying 170 thousand dollars a year. That's right. A million seven hundred and fifty thousand money. That's ain't that pretty well right, huh? So don't say the county ain't doing anything. Oh no, board. I didn't say anything. No one ever said that. Well, well we're paying. said we've spent all of our capital. We have spent money. all our, our capital, our, our fund balance. Yeah, on. but the county took over a million seven hundred fifty thousand. One of those debts for you. I never said nothing derogatory toward the county. I said, we had taken our fund balance money and spent all of it on renovating two schools. And never asked for a tax increase. And never asked for a tax increase. But well, we're going to have got a four million, five million dollar fund balance. You shouldn't be asking for no tax rate. What's your fund balance, Mr. Ford? It ain't nowhere near that. Mm -hmm. According to the according to the last comptroller's report, the 101 budget was 5.1 million and the fund balance was 3.2. That's sixty-four percent. That's sixty-four percent of you operating the cost. Well, I said what we estimated it to be at the end of the nineteen twenty fiscal year. Oh, okay. Now that's that's the the chairman was using an old one on us too. Ours won't be this high as he said. <laughs> I'm just using the, the last controller's report. They used the last controller's report. Which the spreadsheet that y'all passed out one night. I mean, I, these are not again. They're not my numbers. I'm not cooking. But it said that the budget was 5.6 and the fund balance was 3.5. That's 63% of the operating cost. Okay. I just picked that up one night from y'all. Uh, the comp program didn't generate this. No, 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 that's come from y'all. Yeah. That's something y'all passed out one night. All I'm saying is $367,000 is not going to make or break nobody. It ain't gonna make you, and it ain't gonna break us. It ain't gonna make us or break you. Well, it's really 800 and something. We just come down to say yeah. if you could help us out that much. Right. Well, if you could help us out of this million, we got to fork out, then maybe we could help you with it. And say, I don't think you're gonna do that. Yes, ma'am, you gotta come out. Yes, sir. If we give him that much, are we gonna have to raise the taxes 15 It's gotta come somewhere, hon. 
Somewhere around 13, 14, 15 cents. 15.9. 15.9? That's what I have. But there's other options. And here's another thing is, you know, we've talked about since December about maybe some other revenue options, local option sales tax. Yeah, but our hands are tied on that right now. We can't do nothing with it right now. You know that. I also need to make remind the Budget and Finance Committee if you're going to go above the first certified tax rate, we have to have a public hearing That's right. specifically on raising that tax rate. So we'd have to schedule that too. Yeah. I'm just saying there's some other there's some options here other than property tax. I'm just saying procedurally how it would have to be done. Theoretically, we could take out another wheel tax, could we not? Wheel tax B? Not very easy. You have to have a referendum on it, more likely. But that would generate, I mean, that would start here, would it not? Yeah, you know, it would have to be generated from this group, yeah. Right. And really, and truly, I'll be honest with you. But it's the tax that probably distributes the burden across the system. But still, for us, uh, limited income people, that's another tax. But, it, and, but it in brings in a group of people who's not paying any property tax. But in 2022, the high schools paid off, and then the, we could just have only one wheel tax there, that, where we might could have some funds that the public might would support. Right, but that would still have to go to a referendum. Yeah, it's it, it, either way. Okay. But in October, we're going to have year. in October we're going to have the online sales tax coming in. It that starts coming in in October. October that we've never had before, per se, and we don't know how much that's going to be. It could be. I just bought a book from Amazon. So see, you're already going to be confused. <laughs> well, we was we was warm dramatically and got yeah. burdened not to put anything in our budget for that this and year five. because we had no idea what's. They don't have any idea what's going to be. I heard my wife on the phone last night. She was trying to buy something, I don't know where it was, but they was trying to charge her tax. She said, well, I never heard of such. Well, I let her go ahead and blow her top and get off the phone. I said, honey, that's new. You buy anything online, you're going to have to pay tax for it. And it will come back to Charles County. Hello, oh, Mr. Clarity. I was still there in the talking about it. Still here. Come on, join us if you want to. Well, we may be and we may not be. I don't know. Thank you for calling. Bye-bye. That's Mr. Clary. Let's call for the question. You ready for the question, man? Now, the motion before you is to send the budget back. The hit, the, talking about the school budget back to the school board? Yeah. Is that what you put in yeah. motion? That's all. That was your yeah. motion, right? We don't. Yes. Uh, I guess call the roll then, uh, acting Madam Secretary. <laughs> we'll do it by a vocal vote. All right. Your vote? No. Send it back. Uh-oh. 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 Uh-oh.
Mr. Parker. To send it back, she has to correct. Mr. Ferguson. Send it back. Mr. Jones. Send it back. Four to one, send it back. Thank you. You got a tough job. Thank you. It is tough. No doubt about it. Stand adjourned. I hear a motion to adjourn. Motion, motion by Mr. Harris, a second by Brother Griffin. Yeah. All in favor, aye. 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 <laughs> What's up, Rich?